La nostra squadra ha catturato l'area! Bersaglio perforato! Siamo sotto attacco! Bel colpo! Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are looking once again at an Italian battleship. And this is the Vittorio Veneto, the tier 8 battleship. Now there's a bit of an interesting uh, of an interesting thing going on here because Wargaming claims that the Vittorio Veneto is of the Vittorio Veneto class, which I don't think is really a, th a thing. Because just as the um, as the Roma, she is a. Uh, actually, let's go over to the comparison because that might be a little easier. So I'll just throw these out and throw that in and throw the Roma in herself. There we go. I should have really prepared that. Uh, she is a Littorio class battleship, or was rather, <laughs> and she was the the third to be built or to be completed. She was actually laid down at about the same time as the other ones, but uh, the Italians were a little bit short of armor plating and uh, didn't have many shipyards that could actually build ships of that size. Now, these were the crowning glory of the Italian fleet in the Mediterranean during the Second World War and were up against the British because the British had Malta where they would cons would be under attack and would have to be would have to resupply and the Italians had North Africa where they would be under attack and would have need to resupply what the British had and the Italians didn't really <laughs> was well aircraft carriers and uh, things like radar so uh, the Vittorio Veneto was actually at some point the only one of the Littorio class battleships that was operational because the other ones had been swordfished by the British uh, a fate that she uh, that they share with another T8 battleship, the the Bismarck, and uh, she was very active. But most of the time, the Italian attempts at intercepting the British and inflicting some serious damage were were foiled because either the British were warned and had some air spotting going on and found out that they were coming, uh, or they just completely missed each other, and the Italians didn't manage to find the British, or the British managed to run away, uh, or various other occurrences such that in the end she was really just um, being under pretty much constant air attacks actually not just by the British at some point she was under air attack by the Germans which was after the Italians had thrown the towel and said okay well, uh, <laughs> I don't want any more we're going home uh, and uh, at that point the Germans tried to sink that thing didn't really succeed either so uh, the Vittorio Veneto was in the end handed over to the British as a war prize and uh, the British didn't, well, the war was sort of over and they didn't need those, so they ended up scrapping it. That was then the end of the thing. But how does she compare to the Roma? 
And that is probably the question in everybody's mind, because the Roma has a bit of a reputation. And the Roma has a reputation of being a very, very good tier 8 battleship. So we'll actually have to start out with the ship skills, because the Roma gets both the precise aiming and the rapid reload. <laughs> so why is the Roma so good? What's good about the Roma? What makes the ship, uh, in, in many people's minds, somewhat overpowered? Uh, the excellent armor-piercing shells. Uh, she is... The, it's Oftentimes it's Citadel City when the Roma is involved. Because A, she can, uh, she can, she can get them on target very, very precisely, and B, she can, <laughs> she can spit out a lot of it. So uh, that's good. Uh, also, the layout is very traditional with two two turrets forward, such that you can go bow in. The uh, the the AA is sort of the weak spot on these things, and the torpedo protection is excellent. And these two things, uh, I like that the AA is um, is a bit weaker because they were really pestered by the British <laughs> with with biplanes, uh, and didn't end up doing an awful lot about it. It's probably not accurate that um, the Italian AA was necessarily worse than anyone else's, but uh, it's just a kind of a nice reflection. Plus the uh, the torpedo protection system, which was somewhat unique on these ships, with uh, large sort of tubular bulges on the side, which would then detonate the torpedo, but most of the uh, most of the explosive force would be dissipated before it actually hit the inner hull. So. That worked sometimes, sometimes it didn't, but uh, it did have its weaknesses, but at some, it, it, there were some instances where these things took torpedoes and didn't sink, which in general I would say is, an, is a testament of a torpedo protection system doing its job anyway. So unlike the Roma, the Vittorio Veneto is in line with the rest of the, um, of the tech tree. She does get uh, the fuel smoke, and it's a fuel smoke too, so 15 second duration, and uh, she gets the scout plane which is, we've seen that before, I think, on the Black Yamato, and I think one other ship did have it. But um, is it one of the German cruisers? I'm not 100% sure. So someone had it. Uh, but yeah, the scout plane on a battleship sort of is a good thing, because it extends your range, which is nice, and it gives you a from-the-top view. So this is, quite, this is quite useful. Other than that, she obviously gets the semi armor piercing, so unlike the Roma, uh, we actually get semi armor piercing shots, which is also historically somewhat accurate because I think the Italians were trying to manufacture or were planning to manufacture uh, high explosive shells for these ships that didn't get around to it. So um, there we go. Let's look at the stats. Just direct comparison. The Roma has the very slight edge in hit, in hit points and in torpedo protection, but it's not a massive one. Uh, the uh, the armor is not is I would say it's average. It's these are fast battleships. They're not like the super tanky machines, but uh, they are also not super vulnerable. So they're definitely they they can take they can take a bit of a hit. Uh, the Roma is a little faster, and has a probably somewhat noticeable better turn time than the Vittorio Veneto. So similar story to what we had in tier five. The guns, and here it's where it gets really interesting. Uh, they are technically exactly the same guns, because yes, these are sister ships. Uh, Roma has a one second faster base reload and has a little bit better range. The AP damage is the same, and obviously Roma, being the premium, doesn't get the semi armor piercing. She gets the high explosive shells. Uh, and yes, everything else is identical. Now, this is where it gets really, really interesting, because... You would, you would say, okay, so the Vittorio Veneto is distinctly worse off because she's got a one second longer reload and she doesn't get the rapid reload and she doesn't get the precise aiming. That is not quite true. I would say the Vittorio Veneto plays a bit differently than, than I would probably play the Roma. Roma is very precise and, uh, and is, excels at long range gunnery or um, if you get into mid range, uh, just punishing things. The Vittorio Veneto... I would say almost plays a bit more like a battle cruiser because let's assume for a minute here that you are up against the destroyer. If you're in the Roma, you would use your you would use your high explosive against the destroyer, right? So the high explosive on the Roma does about a thousand points of damage. So assuming that you would get, uh, let's say, let's say your your nine shells on target, you would do you have you would have an alpha strike with about nine thousand minus the damage reduction on the destroyer. That's not enough to sink a destroyer. 
The Vittorio Veneto, on the other hand, would use her semi armor piercing shells against destroyers. And one thing I can tell you, they don't overpenetrate. <laughs> so this thing is going to is going to easily do somewhere around the uh, uh, the ballpark of fifteen thousand points of damage in a single strike at close range if she can get the, uh, all the <laughs> all the guns on target. These. 381 millimeter semi armor piercing shells are absolutely terrifying against destroyers. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check something else out in, in that in that ballpark in a minute as well. So yeah, you wouldn't use the high explosive. Now, is that a downside? Not really, because you wouldn't use the high explosive on the Roma for anything else either, other than shooting destroyers. Why would you use high explosive? Because the high explosive, frankly, isn't isn't particularly good. It's okay, but it's not great. And the armor piercing is just as good. And that is something that the Vittoria Veneto has gone going for her as well. The armor piercing hurts <laughs> on these things. Uh, same, similar set of secondaries. Uh, the second, don't underestimate the secondaries on these things either, because these are four triple 152 millimeter turrets, two on each side, and uh, they even have a longer range on the Vittoria Veneto with 6.56 kilometers. That is not a bad range for 150 secondaries. And they do a decent amount of damage as well, so don't underestimate these. They do both get a set of auto secondaries. These are actually these were actually AA guns, the 90 millimeter, and uh, obviously they're not going to do a, they're not going to do an awful lot. But uh, you know they're there. It's free damage. Don't complain about it. <laughs> the AA is where the Roma really struggles, and uh, that situation, well, it's a little bit better in the Vittoria Veneto, but not much. Uh, it's still not an, an awful lot of, of uh, AA. You will shoot the occasional plane down, but airplanes are still a problem, especially that these things tend to be set on fire rather, well, rather frequently. They like to burn, uh, similar to German ships. Uh, the Vittoria Veneto also has an almost one kilometer better surface detection. Actually, with 10.2, it's not a bad, uh, not a bad detection at all. Uh, so that sort of reinforces what I was saying earlier. For me, this is a bit more of a Battle cruiser fast battleship rather uh, rather than a long range uh, long range ship. The uh, the Vittoria Veneto has a good dispersion on these guns as well. It just doesn't get the precise aim. Now one thing I wanted to I wanted to have a look at and that is to get the well I don't have the monarch here but we can throw the black monarch in. It's going to be the same story because all I'm all I'm interested here is the HE damage. So the 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 British battleship. With its main turrets, will de will do 1,700 points of damage on destroyers. The Vittorio Veneto will do 1,800. <laughs> so if you're a destroyer captain and you see one of these things, uh, beware, because if they happen to have the the SAP the semi armor piercing loaded, then um, sorry, what am I talking about? That's the that's the armor piercing. I'm an idiot. Uh, 1,200 points of damage on on, on the Monarch, right? 1,200. The Vittorio Veneto has 1800. Yeah, so like I said, if you're if you're a destroyer captain and you're wary of British battleships shooting at you because they tend to have the high explosive loaded, if you see an Italian battleship, <laughs> be very very careful. So, um, yeah, that out of the way. I was wondering. I did I thought that was a bit much for the high explosive. Uh, yeah, so uh, the challenge obviously then becomes where uh, which which ammunition type do you use? So, with the 381 millimeter compared to the Conte di Cavour that we've reviewed a little bit earlier this week, the semi armor piercing is punchy enough to Citadel a broadside and cruiser. So you can totally use these against cruisers as well. Um, the armor piercing is excellent. I wouldn't necessarily use the semi armor piercing against battleships because uh, you, you can't punch through the belt and uh, it, you will oftentimes get bounces on that unless, and that is the same story once again, unless you really need to put the hurt on and uh, you need to do as much damage as possible as quickly as possible because the armor piercing obviously can also semi-pen and if you want to have almost guaranteed uh, full pens because you need to do as much damage as quickly as you can uh, and you, you're close enough that you can target bow or stern sections, you can use the semi armor piercing and um, dunk a salvo into the bow section where they will full penetrate and uh, not over penetrate and do, and do large amounts of damage. Uh, other than that, the difference between an alpha damage between the two, again, isn't as great as you'd see it in the cruisers. So uh, 
most of the time armor piercing is the is the answer semi armor piercing if you're fighting destroyers absolutely so it's, it's kind of the same as you would do with high explosive on other battleships right all right uh we can have a choice between better torpedo damage reduction so if you can, if you're struggling with this, especially airdrop torpedoes or destroyer torpedoes, you can set this up for um, uh, for a maximum torpedo re damage reduction build and, uh, you know, kind of go in that direction. Personally, I prefer using the guns more because the, the base reload is on the long, on the lengthy side and um, we also get a bit, a, a bit better turret traverse speed. That means I can pick the main battery mod 3 in the first slot to get a slightly improved dispersion. It's not making a massive difference, but uh, because you don't get the precise aiming skill here, it, I think it's a good one to have. Personally, uh, just like in my German battleships, I prefer to have the deck protection mod in slot 2 rather than the acceleration. I know this is not necessarily the meta. <laughs> a lot of people prefer to play this at long range and have the acceleration mod. Um, given how, how easy these things catch fire, uh just just having the deck protection mod feels like a good investment for me and the third slot slot should go into steering gear because like the uh, the uh, unlike the roma she doesn't come with a cruiser cruiser turn time on the rudder that gets it down to just over 11 seconds which is okay for a battleship it's not great but it's okay and uh yeah we've got we're at two at 22 seconds for the uh, for the main guns on on the reload I have put a, um, actually, why am I, put, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised I did this. Uh, I think I, I think I, I'm, I put the wrong commander in here, <laughs> but uh, what you'd actually probably, what you'd actually want here, uh, and let me just re reset that quickly, just to, to um, just to get that properly done. Uh, you definitely want the underwater protection in slot one. You want the torpedo alert in slot two, and you want the artillery maintenance most likely in, in three. Uh, give, we don't we don't know yet what the tier ten ship is going to have, but I assume it's going to be sc scout plane and um, and fuel smoke. So victorious charge because you don't need the other ones, and you don't need the fire supremacy unless you want to, you know, uh, use the captain on the premiums. I wouldn't recommend it because it's a very different skill set on these. You can either take daredevil. I personally wouldn't. Survivalist sounds much more like what I would do in a battleship. Um, you don't you can't set fires so i'm not i mean this ex exploit weakness isn't relying on you setting fires but um, i would probably given how easily she catches fire uh, recommend using the generalist trait instead the fully prepared obviously and uh, yes you can take the extinguisher and i think i pulled him off uh, some other ship that where i was using this setup but um, uh, the mist weaver is not a bad investment because uh, it it's on a, on a fuel smoke one, it's not a huge difference. It's, it's a second and a half longer. On a fuel smoke two, which I think we have here, it's already actually three seconds more. So it adds up and it uh, it reduces the um, the cooldown. I wonder if we're going to get a um, if we we're going to get a an Italian captain uh, who is who is specialized and maybe gives another smoke or something. We will find out. But yeah, that uh, you, you can use the extinguisher. It's not a huge difference. So it's not like a completely wrong setup, but um, you can also use the Mistweaver. So we'll do it like that for now. And uh, if we are looking at the camouflage, you can get the unique historical camo, which looks very pretty and gives us hit points, range, uh, dispersion and torpedo damage reduction. Um, not bad things, all, all playing sort of to her strengths, although um, I don't always play that chip at long range, but the dispersion is very, very good. So having that improved is also nice to have. Anyway, for now, we're going to just use the regular camo. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's try it. And I do apologize if these videos are get a little bit on the lengthy side. Uh, it's just that these are new ships and uh, there's just a lot of things that we can try out. So in the first battle, uh, I haven't picked this because I was doing a monstrous amount of damage, but because uh, it was showing a little bit what these things do against destroyers. So let's have a look at that. We are up against Amagi, Bis Double Bismarck, something something or other, New Orleans, Sims and Leningrad. And we are playing base capture on Hourglass. So like I said, you can play them at range and you probably should, unless you, you know, 
unless you don't come under concentrated fire because the, the armor, while it's not bad, is sort of, it's kind of like the American armor. It's okay, but it's it's not uh, it's not German level of tankiness. Okay, I'm out of here. I'm out here on the left flank. So uh, given that there are two destroyers, there's probably one guarantee to becoming our side. They are either coming around the center island, or they are coming somewhere around the, the left. Um, I am I'm turning my the, the reason I'm looking this direction is because I'm I'm trying to turn my rear turret to that side such that I can back off behind the island if some if let's like, say the Sims comes my way. But uh, I, I am staying on the semi armor piercing because I am hoping to get a shot at the destroyer early on. And uh, like I said, against battleships, not going to do as much as the armor piercing, but also not going to do nothing at all. Obviously, you can't set any fires with it. So uh, this should be round about as far as I want to go for now. And uh, I am spotted, so one of the destroyers is here. And there's the Leningrad. Okay, so lining the shots up. And um, is he going to turn in or out? Don't know. A bit short in case he turns. And that was only three hits. But you've seen, you've seen what that's done. That's taken almost half the Leningrad's health health off. <laughs> Can you imagine what had happened if I had hit like six of those <laughs> or or more? Uh, so uh, s sending the second salvo out against the Amagi because I think the Leningrad has just died, and then getting ready to switch over to the armor piercing because we've got Amagi and Bismarck coming our way. And yeah, you see this is only semi-pens against the Amagi, because she just doesn't have enough penetration on the semi-armor piercing. We've got uh, Bismarck and New Orleans over there. So, a um, uh, target-rich environment. The Gneisen now decides he wants to be broadside on. Uh, let's see what we can do about the New Orleans. A couple of shots out. But um, yeah, the dispersion is pretty good. And uh, in this case, he was turning, so it was only three, sh three hits, but... Uh, he is coming relatively close, and the Bismarck is focusing on the Gneiser now, so I can probably inch a bit forward. Uh, I obviously don't want to get into a brawl with the Bismarck, but uh, I can still inch a little bit forward. And I, once again, I do have my fuel smoke to cover turns if I need to. So shots out at the New Orleans, and that wasn't bad. Five out of six, and we get the rear turret to fire as well. Uh, yeah, that'll do. And uh, he's out of he's out of secondary range, but I am using my fuel smoke now just not to give flat broadside to the Bismarck and get the turn so I can if necessary kite away from the Bismarck and look at that dispersion isn't that beautiful and there she goes <laughs> so now it's uh, Gneisen now and me against Bismarck I don't want to get I don't want to get too far away but we've got two ships down so far so um, he is now starting to shoot at me. But uh, he wants. Uh, I just want to stay out of his secondary range, so I, I will. I will try to um, to to play this at range where I have the distinct advantage over the Bismarck and uh, can get my shells on target pretty easily. Uh, it's just a matter of getting that done and uh, getting a bit of damage in. I, I'm. I haven't played Roma enough to really judge if the uh, the penetration on the AP is equivalent. It might be that it is a little bit better on the Roma, but I've definitely had pretty good experiences with it. So, um, especially against not, not, not as heavily armored battleships as the Bismarck, for example. So uh, let's let's get that done. Actually, there's too many of us here. I mean, we don't need Gneisenau and myself to do this. I mean, Bismarck is trying to get into a long range duel because he's just run out of friends and uh, is uh, is exploring the map border so we don't want to get pulled too far away because there is also a sims and i think he is yeah they're down to three ships so the sims is coming towards the middle so i'm i'm pl i'm thinking of okay i'm just going to turn around at this range i don't even need the fuel smoke because the bismarck isn't the most precise ship and uh probably not going to do an awful lot at this long range against me and the armor will hold up pretty well against that so uh, just just disengaging from the Bismarck and getting ready to defend our capture circle if that should become necessary. I mean, it's 2 minutes 50, but the Sims is close to the cup, and it looks like um, the rest of my team is relatively far out as well, and uh, Bismarck is this low by now that Gneisenau should be okay to deal with it on, um, on her own. So let us come some parting salvos back to the same armor piercing. And uh, cruiser mode activate, uh, and you've, you've seen how many shells we've hit, we've gotten on target, so uh, that is all very encouraging. But yeah, the, that Benson doesn't look like he's going to live very long, and the Sims is capping. There is a cruiser there, but I don't necessarily want to want to rely on that. I mean, we are counter capping, so it probably would be okay. 
but it gives me a good chance to to show what this can do now the sims is in the turn so i'm not using the guns just yet uh, i want to get relatively close also i've got enough hill health to to take the si uh, yeah the sims isn't stupid he is definitely um, trying not to give broadside <laughs> But uh, I am just waiting for him to make his turn. The cruiser takes him under fire as well. So he's moving, there comes the turn, and he's smoking up. And he should be right about here-ish. So semi-armor piercing out, and that's the end of the Sims. Now he's gonna get torpedoes away, that's okay, because uh, he's not gonna sink me, and I think the battle is, is also over yet. There comes the torpedoes. Uh, you, so the two things that really make you this dangerous for, um, for destroyers is the very good torpedo protection, and the semi-armor piercing shells are the most dangerous shells on a battleship in the game against destroyers. So be very, very careful if you're in a DD. These things are absolutely murderous. All right, where did we end up in the team? Uh, we've got 53,000 points of damage because we did that turn in the end. But yeah, we still came in second. And the enemy team didn't have much of a say in this one. So let's go again. This time around we're on domination in southern archipelago and uh, once again it, we're top tier i was kind of trying to get a, a tier 9 battle but uh no luck so i've yet to see what that what that'll do but we're up against bismarck gascogne amagi double gneiser now an admiral hipper and a kagero so just one destroyer in which case i will probably wait and see if i can figure out where that destroyer is before doing something about it the gneiser now is in, in a division so these two are probably going to sail uh, sail close by. Uh, this map actually allows you to know, if, especially if there's only one destroyer, to know pretty well where they are. So wh whichever circle gets captured first is generally the one where the destroyer is. So, uh, and I've got an Öland with me, and these things I think have radar, so we should be all good. And yeah, if the destroyer shows its shows its face, so I'm holding I'm holding back with the armor piercing, just staying on his, on the SAP to see if the destroyer goes into D cap. Because in that case, I can lend some absolutely devastating uh, fire support if the Irland can spot the Kagero. But uh, if if the if B Cup gets triggered first, then the Kagero is over that way, so uh, we don't have to. Yeah, B Cup gets triggered first, so uh, over to the armor piercing because we know that the Kagero isn't here, and the AP is better against uh, against battleships and everything else. So we've we've covered uh, we've covered C, but uh, we also don't know how many of them are coming this way. So let's see. We may have to play a little bit more conservatively. Uh, you, you can't brawl like in a Bismarck, obviously, in these things. They don't have the armor for it. But um, you don't also necessarily have to be afraid of it. Okay, there's Amagi. And uh, there should be something else, because I don't think Amagi is fast enough to grab the cup this quickly. But let's uh, introduce ourselves to the Amagi. Uh, oh, there's the Hipper as well. Okay, so the Hipper is the is the bigger problem for uh, for our destroyer, obviously. So uh, the Irland is dropping some torpedoes at range. And I'm just going to try and draw some fire. Yep, they're shooting at me, so uh, I'm just going to reverse. Uh, don't underestimate a hippo what these things can do. And uh, I can play I can play at this range very, very comfortably with these guns. So uh, shots out at the hippo. And the Amagi is eating the Irland torpedoes because he hasn't been paying attention. And now I'm just, going to, I'm just going to hide behind the island for one salvo, dodge their shots. There comes the Amagi. Most of it donks into the, into the rocks. And we're going forward again now that we're unspotted. And because I would come out pretty much broadside onto both the Hipper and the Amagi, meanwhile the Öland does the exact, exactly the right thing, keeps his guns quiet and just captures B cup, uh, which is uh, sorry D cup. So now we're coming out again, and as soon as I'm going to be spotted, which should happen any second, there's the spot, and I'm just going to fuel, uh, smoke up. So I can make this turn without the Amagi having my flat broadside because you can't see me. Obviously, the Hipper can't see me either, and I don't, uh, you know, if you can't see something, it doesn't exist. So he goes in for a, for a turn to come in somewhat closer, and I'm just waiting for him to complete that turn and blop him into the side. There he comes. Uh, it's a little bit far for the uh, far away for the uh, for the secondaries, but uh, that was a decent hit. Now we will dodge most most of the Amagi shots, and um, uh, yeah, once again, the 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 Hipper is the bigger threat for our Irland. So uh, if I if he doesn't stay behind the island, I can get a shot at him. Then yep, he's he's eaten some Irland torps. So he's now flooding. He controls the flood. Uh, nothing I'm really super interested about. But uh, we also have cruiser support. So now shots out at the Hipper. Let's just get the Hipper away, and uh, turn the ship around to angle against the Amagi, such that he doesn't have a great big target to shoot at. And yeah, the Hipper is now in trouble because he's getting shot at by a cruiser. 
and uh, <laughs> he's he's not even looking my way. So I'm just gonna finish finish off the hipper here, just to not so I don't get torpedoed because he's almost in range. That should be the end of that thing. And now we can deal with the Amagi. Now once again, I need to turn. So taking the first salvo from the Amagi, uh, secondary is out. Don't underestimate the secondaries. I'm gonna slow down a bit so we don't run to the map border, and then we're going to sort of kite away. I, I would have liked to outmaneuver the Amagi here, but I can't get around in front of him. And I will just smoke up because his gun should be almost reloaded, so now he doesn't have anything to shoot at for um, for a little bit. So we get a couple of free salvos into that Amagi, and uh, yeah, he's he's shooting at. Uh, you see his shots falling short because he doesn't know that this is a fuel smoke. This is understandable because this is a new ship. So he's thinking that I am sitting in my smoke, but I'm not. I'm going full speed. These are the auto secondaries, the AA guns pro uh, opening up. And uh, now we just, at this range, uh, just unload at the Amagi with everything we've got. Uh, turn away a little bit. Uh, there comes his shots, but I think he doesn't have angles on his, his uh, center turret and his rear turrets. Because I'm um, since I am kiting away, uh, I actually have the shots out here. Uh, we are ahead on points. A uh, little bit of fire. Amagi is running to the map border. So um, there comes the Citadel. Just switching over to the semi armor piercing in case I need to do extra damage at this range. But I think I can just finish, him off, uh, finish her off with the secondaries. And uh, so we'll just do that. Auto secondaries coming in as well. The next secondary salvo should be enough to get that thing killed. And that should be the end of the Amagi. Yeah, okay, got it. Amagi is dead. Uh, we are, we've lost all the, the, we've lost the other two cups, but uh, they are down to three battleships. So um, that has been a rather comprehensive cleanup over here. The, Bis uh, the enemy Bismarck pulls one back, and uh, it looks like uh, our Erland is now making himself useful over in B cup. Uh, and yeah, that's that's a well play, well played by the destroyer because. That's exactly what I need these destroyers to do. So now we have double Gneisenau over there. And this is a situation where we can go half speed forward and use our spotter plane. Not necessarily to extend the range, because these two are in range, but to get a better view and to see exactly where they're turning and where I need to aim. So I can get these shots on target. And yeah, that hurt. <laughs> so that's one Gneisenau dealt with. And um, there you see the spotter plane circling around me. Uh, it just gives me a bit better, uh, a bit of a better angle and viewpoint uh, to to know exactly where I need to aim, especially if the ship comes straight towards you, uh, the spotters, and look at that dispersion. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> I told you these guns are these guns are hilarious. Uh, okay, we're almost in secondary range, and the Gneisenau is the last ship alive, so now we can have some fun. Gneisenau is obviously going to try and torpedo me. It takes out one of my secondaries. That's okay. Don't really need it. Uh, a couple more shots out, and uh, we need to we need to slow down and turn in because he probably dropped torpedoes at this point, so they should show up any second. Uh, these auto secondaries are opening up as well, but so do the nice nose. Yeah, there come the torpedoes. That's the only thing I wanted to avoid, and now we can get back around and get our guns on target again. And uh, I mean, we've used all our three heals, so we've definitely not been skimping with our hit points. And that's another Citadel on the Gneisenau, and he is pretty much dead at this point. There he goes. And it's an easy 113,000 points of damage in the scene. <laughs> um, I like this ship. I really like this ship. This is, a, this is a good ship. The dispersion is excellent. This is the dispersion I wish the Amagi had. <laughs> the dispersion is excellent. The speed is good. Uh, the semi-armor piercing, great torpedo defense, and fuel smoke mean that you are murderously dangerous against destroyers if you catch them unawares. Uh, the only thing you can't do is defend yourselves against carriers. So if you're coming under concentrated air attack, you need to be very, very careful. Uh, other than that, playstyle wise, I would say leaning more towards battle cruiser for me. But uh, once again, a very versatile ship. You can play. You can play at long range easily with the ship. That's fine. Or you can, if the situation requires it, get in a little bit closer and uh, do things like what I just did to that poor Gneis now. So um, an absolutely excellent tier 8 battleship, in my opinion, fast battleship, is a lot of fun. And uh, once, you, once you've figured out what to use the semi-armor piercing for and, and how, you can, how you can leverage the spotter plane, and uh, it's, it's just great. I, I like this ship. I really like this ship. I haven't tried the tier 6 and 7. So, uh, and I haven't tried the tier 9 yet either. Uh, that will come. 
I will get to the, them all, but um, for now, that sort of concludes my first look at the new Italian battleship line. I, I am very excited about it. So if every, everybody who wanted a Roma but couldn't afford one or it wasn't on sale or uh, just too expensive because, you know, TA premiums aren't cheap, uh, I would say it's not, uh, it's, it's, it, she might be not quite as powerful as Roma, but it's definitely uh, a very, very interesting and different tier 8 than what we've had so far. And it's a great fun ship to play, in my opinion. So there you go. That's it for today. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.